Hey everyone, it's Thursday and you know what that means. It is Miss Kelly, Chatty Patty, and Barry the Sleeve. Um, today's video is called Testing, Testing, Testing because we're going to talk about the um, testing process um, you're going to go through before your surgery. Um, we have a special guest and that's Nori. I just picked this little guy up today at 7-Eleven. I normally would not do that, but it smells like coffee. <laughs> um, so here we are, me and Barry. Turn him around so you can see his little face. Um, so here we are. We're here. Um, so the testing, testing, testing. So we're going to talk about the testing that you're going to be going through um, to qualify for your surgery. Now, just because you're going through the testing doesn't mean you're essentially qualified for your test, your surgery. You still have to go through all this stuff, and they have to make sure that you are healthy and you know sound to go. Um, and if there's anything that they have to worry about that would cause um, you know you to not get your surgery or maybe there's something that they need to repair um, before you have your surgery or something they can repair during your surgery um, like me I had a hiatal hernia um, which would be you know your, your this is your esophagus here this is your esophagus here and um, you know there's a hernia here right here above your stomach and then they just um, repair it um, so um, oops sorry about that um, so um, in order to find things like that, uh, like the hiatal hernia, they're going to like do an upper endoscopy. They, they're going to put you to sleep and they're going to put a camera down your, 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 um, your nose and they're going to go down and see if you have any polyps or, you know, anything like that. I, they already knew I had a hiatal hernia prior to, um, this process. Now, um, everybody's going to have a different time frame about when they're going to have their surgery or how much time they're going to have to get all these testings done. It's going to be based on your insurance. Um, Back in the day, everyone usually had to wait about six months to get the surgery. Now it's a little less. Um, I had gone through the process about uh, four or five years ago. I went through the process about four or five years ago, and um, it is a little less involved than it was, um, you know, now. Um, now you can get your surgery between three and four, three and six months. It's depending on on your insurance. So um, this time around, I managed to get my surgery within four months, um, which is awesome. Of course, um, the sooner the better. Um, so your testing. Okay, so we talked about the endoscopy. Um, so some of the testings you're going to need to do. You have to get clearances from a pulmonologist, a cardiologist, blood work, um, a psychologist. Um, and you have some some x-rays and um, ultrasounds okay so um, the first testing now you have to keep in mind that um, like I said some of these testings they have to be like spanned out because of the fact that um, the clearance the clearance certificate only lasts a certain amount of time some of them have um, expirations like you don't want to go see the cardiologist for a, cardi a cardiology um, a clearance you know at at the beginning of this because that um that uh clearance is only gonna last for thirty days, so you want to do that as close as possible to your surgical um you won't have a date, but you'll have like a f time frame as to when that's going to happen. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is going to go, of course, you have to go see your own um, primary doctor, and they may have their own testing that they'd like to do and make sure, you know, they, they're going to have to clear you as well. Um, you have to keep in mind that sometimes a primary doctor may not be all in it. So be be prepared if your primary doctor isn't one of those kinds of people who are all for that. Um, mine was. Um, unfortunately, she had left the practice um, after my surgery, but um, she had um, worked for a um, a pulmonologist as a um, uh, who did a lot of testing for people who had bariatric surgery. So she was very um, kind about it. Um, and you got to be prepared for all the comments that you're going to be getting along the way. And yes, it does come from, um, it will come from um, medical professionals as well as um, people in your own life. Um, I, my nurses and my primary doctor said, aren't you too small for, for this surgery? No, I wasn't too small. And actually, I, um, yeah, and my, but my primary doctor was all for it, even though, um, you know, the nurses were not really understanding of it. But like I said, you're going to meet those kinds of people along your journey before your surgery and after your journey because there's mean people everywhere, even here on YouTube, you know. But, okay, so um, after you see a primary doctor, they're probably going to have you do some blood work. Um, now, your surgeon's going to have you doing um, blood work um, 
of his own. They want to check your vitamin levels and things like that. Um, you're going to have a couple sets. Um, like for me, like a, um, I live in the Upper East, Northeast Coast. Most people uh, over here are um, vitamin D deficient. So we have to, you know, have that checked out. Um, but you'll, I have to start taking a, um, a multivitamin as well as a um, vitamin D pill. Um, still deficient, but that's okay. All right, so then you're going to go see a pulmonologist. Um, the pulmonologist is going to decide how your breathing is. You're going to go check your lungs, your lung function, your breathing function. Um, in many cases, they may um, have you do what's called a sleep study um, to see if you have sleep apnea. Um, not everyone has to do it. I didn't have to do it because um, I um, uh, I said earlier that I was diagnosed with a hiatal hernia, so I ended up having to go for an extra test um, with a digestive disease doctor who, you know, cleared me just for the hiatal hernia, nothing else. So my sleep issues prior to surgery were due to the fact I had the hiatal hernia. So um, I did not, um, of course, I'm going to give you a checklist and you're going to answer all these questions and they'll decide whether or not you need it from there. I mean, some people, so they just have some um, uh, other blood work. They're going to have you do blood work very close to your, um, to your surgical date. And you're going to have to go back to see your primary doctor because they're going to check for everything too. That kind of, um, that kind of, reduces your time when you're doing your um, pre-surgical testing. Um, pre-surgical testing, we'll talk about that next week, um, you know, because all these testings are totally separate from your pre-surgical testing. Um, next week, um, next week's edition of uh, Chatty Patty with uh, Barry is going to be about, um, you know, getting there for your surgery because uh, you'll be very close at this point. Once you have this, all this done, like I said, you cannot miss one appointment with your surgeon or your nutritionist or you have to start over from the whole process again. Um, but we'll talk more about, you know, what's going to happen after all these tests next week. All right, guys, I will see you later. When you look good, you feel good.